So there are about 100 bajillion videos about the common side effects of Accutane, but there is not even one video that tells you how often each of those common side effects actually happen to people who take Accutane. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the five most common side effects of Accutane and how often each of those happen to people who are taking Accutane. So a little backstory, I actually took Accutane for 72 weeks. I took one of the highest doses that's ever been recorded in the world. Fortunately, my acne actually came back after I stopped taking the medicine, but I experienced quite a few of the side effects. Now, this idea popped in my head the other day. We all know the side effects, but I want to know exactly what the chances are for me to get each of them. So instead of doing what everybody else does and just telling you what my personal experiences were and what side effects I had, I actually looked through studies that show exact percentages of how many people experienced. So like I said, we're gonna be looking at the five most common ones, but stick around for after this because I will also be going over erectile dysfunction, which is incredibly common, actually kind of frighteningly common. So stick around for that. Well, let's start out with number one, which is dry skin and dry lips. Now you and I could probably both guess that this is a very common one. That's why I started with it. This is the most common side effect. And in this study, they found that dry lips and dry skin were reported in 94.25%. So basically 95% of people who took Accutane. Not super surprising. I definitely dealt with both of those super severe dry lips to the point that they would actually bleed. That is a very annoying side effect, but common. So you knew that. Number two, bone and joint pain. This is a super common one, also something I experienced. So let's look at what the study says. 47.9% of patients had arthralgia, which is joint pain. 53.2% had myalgia, which is muscle pain. 70.2% had lower back pain. 11.7% had sacroiliitis. And 4.3% had tendinopathy. This is why this video is interesting, because I know, and I've talked about it a bazillion times, how bone and joint pain happen pretty often, but I did not really know that it was this high up. I experienced it, but I also lifted my entire time taking Accutane, like bodybuilding heavy lifting. So I expected to have some soreness and it was pretty annoying, but it wasn't something that stopped me from lifting or it wasn't something that was like crippling, but it was pretty annoying. But about half of people who take Accutane are going to have joint pain. Half of them are going to have muscle pain and 70%, almost everybody is going to have lower back pain. That's definitely something to consider and something that I don't know why we aren't talking about these rates when doctors are prescribing and telling people that they can take Accutane and just kind of breezing over these side effects. That's crazy. Number three, eye side effects. So sensitivity to brightness, uh, decreased dark adaptation, being able to see in the dark, decreased tolerance to contact lenses, decreased vision, right? Blurring of the vision and basically anything else that falls under uh, adverse effects for the eyes. In this study, it showed 13.8% of the Accutane group experienced ocular adverse effects. So all of those things that I mentioned and a few other things that I didn't mention. I personally definitely experienced a sensitivity to brightness to the point that when I was looking outside when it was sunny in the daytime, like I had to, I, I couldn't, I had to squint my eyes all the way or wear sunglasses because it would almost feel like they were burning. Um, and when it came to dark, I definitely noticed that I couldn't see as well in the dark, especially if it was like a dark room with a screen. Every Everything around the screen was just pitch black. Couldn't see anything. I didn't have any blurring of the vision or anything like that, but this is definitely something else to note, especially if you already deal with issues with your eyes. This is something to know. Number four, nosebleeds. Now, because of the dryness that happens to your skin, your lips, it also happens inside of your nostrils. And if you are prone to already having nosebleeds, it's only going to get worse. So how often did nosebleeds happen for Accutane people? So 5% of the patients already had a history of nosebleeds in the last six months before they started treatment. And then this number increased to 60% when the treatment was completed, which shows that about 55% of people who take Accutane are going to experience nosebleeds. I noticed them, but it wasn't severe. I know some people literally are just like, just flowing out of the nose. For me, it was more so if I put a tissue up my nose, I could almost always blot a little bit of blood out, especially um, when I was exercising or something where I'm breathing a lot more air, it would definitely sting and hurt. And then that's when I could put a, a, a napkin up my nose and, and draw some blood, kind of nasty. 
Now, number five, triglyceride levels and cholesterol levels. This might sound a little boring, but this is very, very important. Triglycerides are the amount of fats that are flowing around in your blood. And as you know, cholesterol is not good to have an elevated level. It can cause uh, arthrosclerosis. It can cause a closing of your blood vessels. It can also cause a lot of strain on the heart. Overall, it's just really not good for you and can kill you as you get older. So let's look at the rates of this. In this study, it showed that Accutane elevates the triglyceride, the fat level, in 50% of patients and the cholesterol level in 30% of patients. That is really, really high. And that is something I've never heard before this study. I had uh, elevated liver levels um, almost the entire time and we would have to you know, deal with that in different ways. But that is a crazy finding. That's a, that, I don't know why we're not talking about this stuff. Now, those were the five most common side effects. So those are the ones that I really wanted to cover because I know almost everybody is going to have at least one of those things. But you probably have heard that there is a high level of people who experience erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction after taking Accutane. And for me, that was terrifying. I read about that a lot. But since then, there's been way more studies. And it's definitely not something that anybody wants to have to deal with. And it happens in a decent amount of people. You'll even hear about, you know, fringe cases where people for 10, 20 years years afterwards have still not regained function of their erections. And that is terrifying just to get rid of your acne. So let's take a look at this study. Uh, this was published recently in the International Journal of Risk and Safety in Medicine, and it found that Accutane had by far the highest rate of reported complications. In 14 of the 49 cases of men who had been prescribed it, they suffered erectile dysfunction. This works out to being around 36% of people in this study had erectile dysfunction after using Accutane. 36%. That is way higher than I previously thought. Now, I do have to give a little bit of a disclaimer here. I I looked through multiple different studies and the percent rate was way different in different studies. Some of them had as low of 0.02% people uh, experienced erectile dysfunction and some had even higher, up to 80% of people had erectile dysfunction after taking Accutane. So what I'm gonna do is make a whole separate video in a couple weeks once I've dived through all the research I can find and come up with a more average rounded number of how many people experience erectile dysfunction after Accutane. But I just wanted to put it out there. It's not a non-chance. It definitely is a possibility. So there you have it. I really want to make this video because I realized that nobody has made a video like this. Uh, if you are somebody who is dealing with acne still and you want to try something before you try Accutane, which obviously has a ton of risks, you should definitely check out my acne program. It's called the Acne Method. It is a completely natural way that works in a huge amount of people. You can see the transformations on my website, theacnemethod.com. It's super, super easy. It's very simple. It's a step-by-step -step plan and it's only $10. So check that out. And if you're looking for my favorite skincare brand for mild to moderate acne as well as acne scarring. It's actually what I've used for my acne scarring after I finally did figure out how to get rid of my acne. You can check it out. It's called Banish. They have really high quality products. It's all natural. It's all small batch made. So all the active ingredients are still active when they get to you because they make a new batch of products every week. So the products you're getting are only at most seven days old, which is unprecedented. No other company does that. The products are super fire. I can't say enough good things about them. The products all aim to increase your collagen and elastin in your skin which keeps you from wrinkling and aging as quickly, as well as improving your scarring and your mild to moderate acne. Seriously, check them out. Go look at the transformations on the website. It's mind blowing. The discount code is Brian5. I'll get you $5 off of your first order. Check that out, banishbrian.com. It's in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, especially if you've had an experience with Accutane. Let me know what your side effects were that you discovered and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Remember, you are not alone. You are beautiful. You are part of Team Acne. I'll see you skin bosses in the very next video.